Good afternoon. I am very disappointed. We went through a process earlier this summer prior to hiring Mike Babcock as our head coach, but we got it wrong and that's on us. I can promise you we will learn from this moving forward. I also understand the criticism that we are getting. It is deserved, but we can all, all we can do now is learn from it and do everything we can to help our coaches and players get ready for the season. My excitement about our team and what we can accomplish this season has not changed and we are looking forward to going north. We understand the expectations of ownership and we will continue to be evaluated every day. That's part of the job. We understand that, but our focus right now is on our players and our coaches and getting ready for this season. I know this is a major misstep that we have to move past. I would like to thank the NHL and I would like to thank the NHL Players Association. When we first heard of these issues, uh, when we had discussions with both of those groups, we welcomed an investigation. They were very transparent with the information we received and we digested the information. And from there, in talking with uh, Mike Babcock, we decided there was no going back. Uh, the re resignation went forward from that point on. Uh, we're coming into camp healthy. We have added quality players to our team. We have built a deep and talented group of prospects. We're excited about this team and where we're headed. We have to get through this situation. On a very personal note, this is one of the toughest times I've been a part of in my long dealings and career in the National Hockey League. It's very troubling for me, but we also know and firmly believe that we have a good group. We care about our people. We care about our staff. We've learned a lot as a group. We've learned a lot to help us go forward, and I plan on going forward. Thank you. This morning, I had a meeting with the players and I apologized for any inconvenience, awkward um, situation that this may have put them up in. And um, it, it was my sincere apology to, to them. I'm extremely disappointed by what has transpired over the last week. We understood the dynamics of hiring Mike before we did so and understand the criticism now that it didn't work out the way we had planned. Mike was hired on, based on personal relationships we've had with him. The feedback we'd received from numerous people in the game that we know and respect and extensive conversations with Mike. It's obviously fair to question our due diligence, but I can assure you that it was done thoroughly. At the end of the day, I believe that Mike Babcock deserved another opportunity to coach. Obviously, that was a mistake, and that responsibility is mine. I do not believe there were any ill intentions on Mike's part in the way he conducted interviews with our players to get to know them. However, whether there was intent or not, some of our players weren't comfortable with his methods, and that was concerning. As we gathered information and had numerous discussions, both internally and externally, it became very clear that the distractions caused by this were too great and were having a negative impact on our players. As a result, we came to a conclusion with everybody involved in the process that the best course of action was for Mike to step down and Pascal Vincent to take over as the head coach. Columbus Blue Jackets. Our organization's built on values that we take very seriously. We value hard character and attitude with the emphasis on pride, professionalism, and respect. These are the ideals that guide how we operate on the ice, in the community, and in everything that we do. We are committed 
to doing the best we can and doing things the right way to represent our organization, city, fans, in a manner that earns their respect, trust, and support. Nothing is more important. We believe our players and everyone else inside and outside our organization should be treated with respect all the times. Failing to live up to that standard is not acceptable. Are we perfect? No. Can we do better? Yes, and we will. Pascal is prepared for this opportunity. He has earned it. While the circumstances are less than ideal, he's a very good coach and nothing should detract from that. He was a strong candidate as we went through the pot process and looked at earlier this year, and we are fortunate to have him in a position to lead our team. And just like JD said, that, and I told this to our team too, that for a little while, this is the uh, most excited that I've been going into the training camp. And, and it's, it's sad that we're here talking about this and disappointing, obviously, but there's a lot of excitement inside the locker room to put this past us, move forward and stick together and, and, and make us a stronger team. Okay, with that, if you have a question, I'll ask that you raise your hand and we'll get you a mic. Start with Aaron Portsline, second row. Thanks, Todd. A question for both of you. Uh, how difficult do you think it will be for the room to move past this? I guess this could go one of two ways. It could galvanize a group or it could fracture a group. Did, can you have a sense coming out of your meeting today, which, which direction that is right now? Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I had a meeting with the uh, leadership group yesterday separately and then with the whole team this morning. And, and I believe that they are um, ready to move past this. They want to move past this. Um, they want to use it uh, as, uh, as something that can make us stronger. They're all excited about this year. And, um, you know, I, I just just uh, before coming here, talked to uh, our captain as well. They all want to want to move forward and and uh, just concentrate on what we're uh, here to do and and um, that's starting uh, tomorrow with the medicals or on Wednesday with the medicals and Thursday on the ice. Clay Hall, were you surprised by his protocol with the phone? Have you had had you had ever heard of something like this? Yeah, and I, I went through it with my myself too. That was his way of uh, introducing his family, having me introducing my family to him. And uh, personally, I had no problem with it, but uh, I can I can understand that it can put somebody in an uncomfortable and awkward situation. How did the NHLPA motivate? Did they come to both of you and say, hey, you got a problem? Well, um, what happened was the PA came in, talked to their players privately, which is absolutely their right. They were in touch with Gary Bettman. They had been in touch with me too. And I helped facilitate making sure this is happening the right way. We're completely open, transparent, want it done properly. I got a call when we were up in Traverse City at our rookie tournament from Gary Bettman. Actually, I was in a restaurant and I went up running out and sat in the car by myself. There was Gary and his whole staff, including Bill Daly on the call. And there was the PA staff on the call. And they filled me in with uh, what had transpired through their investigation. And with that, I went to uh, Yarmo and our group, Mike Priest, who represents our ownership. And we started the process of what we were going to do. We had to digest it, figure it out. And with that, uh, Yarmo uh, ended up meeting with Mike Babcock. And basically there was going to be no end to this. This is what we had to do. And the resignation process started at that point. That's the exact traffic. No way to resolve it. No, we felt it. It's, 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 we, we, this is going to sound a little bit. He was a player. I was a player. We have to understand our players and the, it wasn't going to work with our players. It just wasn't going to work. So we had to go forward. Go to Brian Hedger, uh, center back. Um, either one of you can answer this one. Um, you know, since this has come out, uh, you've had, multiple players, I believe three players, you know, Zach Boone and, and Johnny Gaudreau come out and say they had no problem uh, with the method. Um, Yarmo, you just kind of mentioned it as well. Um, so 
obviously somebody had a problem with this. Are you guys under the belief that it was more of a perception of how that was done? Or was it done differently with different players, if I'm making myself clear? Well, I, I really don't know because what happened with the PA and the players is their business. I do know that uh, when the whole thing broke, Boone Jenner was very upset that it broke the way it did. And he put a statement out on his own. There's been some perception out there that we had something to do with this stuff. We didn't. Zero, zippo, nothing. And Boone maybe felt that it didn't, nothing bothered him. It went swimmingly. Other players may have had different opinions and obviously did. So that's how it works. And when you when you think of a hockey club with uh, 23, 25 guys, everybody's uh, a consideration. And with that being said, we made our uh, we we made our decision and did what we did. You know, one more uh, follow up on this. Uh, there are multiple reports out there um, of a young Blue Jackets player in a meeting with Babcock, and and Mike Babcock is holding his phone for several minutes, maybe up to 10 minutes. Um, do you feel like that is appropriate, I guess, in, in that setting? I don't feel it would be appropriate, but I don't know what happened. We've never been told that. I have no idea. Next, we'll go to Whitney in the front row. Yarmo, you mentioned um, you apologize for any awkwardness or anything that the players may feel. Is there any concern, and this is, I guess, for both of you, how maybe this was reported like the whoever whichever younger players felt uncomfortable that it didn't maybe go through like they didn't go to Boone or maybe they didn't come to you guys you guys have more information than we do but is there any concern with that communication yeah over the years I've been here now for 10 years and and I've had numerous players come to me with uh, with some of the problems they may have on the ice off the ice with their families different things um it, it's a complex relationship with the management and and the player it isn't always comfortable for them to come to me with their problems. We may be in the middle of a contract negotiation or something, and then they they don't want to let me know that they're having problems. I'm just making it up. But but um, that's one thing I mentioned to the team too that I I, I want to keep building a relationship with the players that they can trust us and always come to us in any situation, how difficult it may be, and trust us that we always have their best best interest in heart. And we'll help them no matter what it is. And 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 I have that relationship with many of the players that I've worked with in the past that are not playing anymore. And I have uh, a few of them on our staff, actually. Um, I take pride in that. I, I worked in, in uh, scouting and drafting and developing those players. So I felt that that relationship was always important and, and, and not just to care about the player and the athlete, but the person as well. But it, it is a complex situation. It is not as simple for the players to uh, always be honest about how they're feeling or what's going on through in, in their lives. And so, I guess, vulnerability to us that are in, in this position to uh, decide about their future in, in hockey. And, and, and that, that makes it difficult. And J.D., you mentioned that you were both players. You have a very young core with mm -hmm. this team. Um is that something that to, seeing the change that hockey is maybe going through with some of these younger guys, you can't coach them the way or interact with them the way they used to is, was that something that you guys are still like learning and considered well, here? I, I think with, with hockey clubs, when you have 25 players on your team, whether they're raw rookies or older fellas, everybody's got a different personality and it, you watch for that. You try to deal with it. And, um, I know that obviously times change. You try to evolve. I'm a bit older now in this business, but I do have children. I have grandchildren and I see how it all operates. I try to watch it. I try to learn actually, to be honest with you. And um, that's something that we have to keep evolving with, uh, whether it's our training staff and how they deal with the young players with injuries. It's the coaches and how they deal with them. It's, it's everything. And we're, we're responsible with learning that part of it we're responsible with the evolution of the young player of today which is different than back when i played obviously um actually maybe in some ways no we had problems back then too we really did but uh but it's it's certainly again it's on it's on us it's on me to to evolve with this to learn to go forward the right way and um that being said it's to do with total respect for the players 
Nicole here on the left. So, J.D., you said we got it wrong and this was a major misstep, but mm -hmm. this was something that was kind of clear from the beginning that the potential for there to be a problem was here. As soon as Mike Babcock's name was mm -hmm. floated, people felt this was a very controversial hire and that the potential was greater for there to be a problem than for it to go smoothly. Uh, now, in I'm, hindsight, yeah. how would you respond to the to the fans, to the media? There were a lot of people who said this was not the right thing for the Jackets to mm -hmm. do at the time. How do you respond to them now? Maybe they were right. It's on us. It's on me. And uh, I respect opinions around. We did a, a lot of research. Uh, when we went through this process, Mike came into Columbus two or three different times and came to my home and uh, with our group. And we went through a lot of different things, a lot of different things. And um, sometimes you just flat out make a mistake. We made a mistake. I'm, f I'm free to sit up here and tell you that. And to our fans, I think some were excited. Some were going, Ooh, what's this going to be about? It didn't work. Uh, I uh, I think as a group, we owe them um, the explanation and apology, but we're also very comfortable in going forward with Pascal. Once we get through this, he's a good coach. He's, um, he's a terrific human being. So we have to look in that direction. We've learned. There's nothing more than I can say that we've learned. You go to Clay Hall. Ownership put out a statement here in the last half hour or two. Um, did they discuss possible changes in the front office to either of you? And have you been put on some kind of notice that we can't be here yeah. again? Very, very fair question. I think what what's happened here is we've had discussions with our ownership who was very supportive. And it was uh, revolving around our goals for this season. Uh, and we, we need to make a major improvement compared to a year ago with all the issues we had. And I think we still can. And so I, I believe that the ownership is in a situation where they believe that and it's on us to prove it. So we're going into this season. We need improvement. We need to show that our young people that we have, our healthy people that we have, everything from A to Z is going to go in the right direction. And we appreciate the support. But primarily with the win-loss win record. Yeah, it's it has to do. We're in the win loss business, and that's what it has to do with. But I, but I also you know when you, when you think of hockey and sports and win loss, it's it's very interesting because and I've mentioned it I don't know how many times when we've been involved with press conferences that we try to make Columbus a better place, and that's uh, always been a mandate from ownership. This is a big bump on the road, a big bump, big pothole, whatever you want to call it. But we're still going to make Columbus a better place. Our, our, our staff, our group, our players, people in the business side, they're constantly in the community building parks or meeting with people or helping the, the, the people that need help, kids all over the place, the rinks they build. It goes on and on and on. I'm not going to let this get in the way of, of uh, the Blue Jackets organization continuing to make the greatest Columbus area a better place. It's something that's very important to the ownership, and it's really important to me. Dave, right in the front center. Obviously, the season starts in a month here. I'm curious, how much do you think this is a setback for the team? How, how do you just move forward for both of you, uh, kind of knowing that you've got to take the ice for training camp? Two days? Players love to play hockey. I think they love to put this behind them and, and move forward and get to uh, do again what they love to do, is get on the ice and, and compete and win hockey games. That's what they're focused on. Um, for their own careers and for the sake of the team. And, and uh, based on my conversations, they, they're, they're really look, looking forward to just moving on and getting, uh, getting on the ice. How did that, oh, sorry. Quick follow-up and we've got time for three more. <clears throat> how did that conversation go with Pascal? Obviously you, you had the meeting with Babcock, he resigns. And then how did you guys come to deciding on Pascal? Well, he, he was the perfect choice. He was very close to, uh, to, to, um, our first choice anyway he, he's he's been with our organization now for two years he's uh he was interviewed for the head coaching position um two years ago and we were very impressed with him hired him as an associate head coach at the time and uh he's a perf perfect um continuation to uh what's been a long-term plan all 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 the way all the way okay we'll go to Aaron Portsline. line uh, Yarmo with with Pascal elevating to the coaching the head coach's job 
do you need another assistant and will you hire from within for that job? Uh, we've had uh, discussions about that, how to, how to round up the group, and and we will continue to have that with Pascal and, and um, see what what our best options are and and uh, move forward from there. And JD, for clarity's sake, the phone call from the NHL and the NHLPA in Traverse City. What date was that? Friday or Saturday? Uh, I believe it was Friday. I believe it's kind of a fog, to be honest. I believe it was Friday and. Uh, we immediately met with our group and with our ownership through Mike Priest, and we got heavily into discussions, even though we had had discussions prior just because it was bubbling. But we, uh, you, you've got to wait for, for the investigation to finalize, and those people did a good job with this. They did a good job at helping us. Let's go back to Mike A. Race. John, if I'm hearing you correctly. Oh, there you are. Sorry. You, you, you're saying you don't know what he did. I, I think that what what is fair to say is he's made players very uncomfortable, and and we just can't continue with that happening. Pardon me. You're not exactly sure how is that would you. You know, sometimes when things happen, there's players involved, and that's a private world, and sometimes you need to leave it there. But I do know that there was things that happened, and it's led to this point where we're at right now. Um, his contract going to be honored or is there show cause grounds within that allows you to terminate it? Yeah, we've had discussions. We've come to an agreement. We'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Last question to go to Mark Shag, the second row right. As what do you feel like that you learned about the vetting process that you'll do differently in the future to make sure that you have everything kind of in a row when you have big decisions to make? I really felt that we talked to enough people with credibility and people that were respected in the hockey world, um, probably um, extend that um, and, and do even more of that. Um, but as I mentioned in my statement that I can assure you that the uh, due diligence was thorough in talking to several different people in different positions who would work with them um, as players, as management, as, as um, coaches um, in different uh, settings too, from, from the national team to national hockey league, to junior years, to, uh, to American league team. Um, so we felt we were thorough, but we're, we're going to be more thorough. Thank you guys.